Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to episode 12 of the Hindi Project podcast. We have a repeat uh, guest, alhamdulillah, today with Sheikh Mamoun Hassan. Uh, we had a really beautiful conversation about Ramadan and how to prepare to, for Ramadan and some of the pitfalls that sometimes we fall into. We also talked about like the spirituality of food and how you know we should be making food we should we should be approaching food differently particularly in this month um than any other month and it should be serving our ibadah rather being the thing that is tearing us down sometimes and i hope you guys will enjoy it so alhamdulillah we got our first time we got a repeat customer yes sir Sheikh <laughs> <laughs> Hassan. alhamdulillah um so we both just came straight from a dinner, which is probably a mistake because then we were talking all night and then now we're here and now we have to actually talk. Yeah. No, nah, I can talk. I can talk. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. good. Yeah. Actually, it's, it's probably it's probably good that we came from a dinner because we're going to be talking about maybe like something, you know, uh, on Ramadan, I guess. Yeah. yeah. We were talking about talking about Ramadan. And uh, so let me make a confession before sure. we even go anywhere. <laughs> I don't know if I should make Ramadan for me, honestly, mm -hmm. is my least favorite ibadah. I'm not gonna lie, like fasting. <laughs> it's just it's just something I really struggle with, uh, and I've struggled with it for such a long time. Uh, I, I've always like I've always thought it was it was so funny. There's people who actually like like fasting. Fasting to them is like such an easy yeah. type of ibadah, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Man, I, I love prayers. Uh, you know, I, I'm not. I, you know, I can give money like on a stingy like that. Yeah. It, like all of these ibadat. You know what I mean? Even even Umrah, it was really difficult. You know what I mean? But I mm -hmm. kind of enjoyed it. But Ramadan actually like really makes me like anxious. Like before it comes, it makes me really really anxious. And for the for the longest time, uh, mm -hmm. I, I've struggled with this. I think a lot of people feel anxious before it. Um, but mostly like, cause it's like this big shock to your system and you're going to stop eating and it's yeah. going to be like your days and nights are going to start like flipping. And mm -hmm. like, that's like the whole, like people feel that anxiety. I think yeah, it's, it's kind of natural to some extent. I, I just don't like it. But what's interesting is that they statistically way more people fast than pray regularly. Yeah. Why do you think that is? Yeah. Um, Actually, I think it's I think it's funny because well, first of all, people who fast and don't pray, those are usually people who you know, as as far as I can, as far as I can really, uh, I guess, contemplate, mm -hmm. uh, are people who live with other Muslim people, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, who who just really don't have an opportunity to eat or to drink, you know, you by think themselves. That's, that's what or, it is? or 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 is yeah. the completely opposite: people who don't live with other Muslims and they feel. Because they're not practicing, because they don't really uh, pray, mm -hmm. that Ramadan would make would become this kind of like an opportunity for them to come together with other Muslims from around mm -hmm. the world. I don't, I don't know why. Yeah. Um, I actually think some people also think that it's easier like, because you can abstain from eating and drinking. Maybe. I do think that community feels a big thing like that. You know, you're eating together. You're, um, you know, you're fasting together, like, and, and it's like this thing that binds you with everyone else in the community because yeah. you're all doing it together mm -hmm. at the same time. I feel like that's uh, that's one of the, probably the yeah. motivations behind yeah. it. But I don't know. Like, I feel like the psychology behind that is probably really powerful. Why people fast more, way more people fast than than pray. Than pray. Um, I don't know. Like, I've been thinking about it from a number of perspectives and. It's weird because you live in this like individualistic world now and everybody is driving for like their own individualism. Even like people who want to understand religion, they want to understand on their own terms. Yeah. Which is, you know, an unfortunate reality right now in, yeah. in this world. But then when it comes to Ramadan and it's like this communal feeling and somehow it just draws everyone in. Mm -hmm. It's also, um, what, what are the interesting things about Ramadan and and it's also like a personal experience that every year I always um, I, I always make goals for Ramadan. Mm -hmm. And every year at the end of Ramadan, I just always say, oh, I could have done better. <laughs> I don't know if anybody has the same feeling. But every time Ramadan ends, I'm like, oh. Oh, it could have been so much better than it actually was. Do you achieve your goals? or um, Sometimes I do. It, it depends on what yeah. they are. Um, so, so this actually kind of brings us, I guess, really to, you know, I, I, um, 
So I have this like seven point, uh, uh, like like Ramadan pointers, right? That I give, and they're not really religious. They're not really, um, uh, they're not really spiritual or anything like that. Right. But just they're pretty like much tips, really one on one project management yeah. that I think you should just kind of step into Ramadan with this, mm -hmm. with these uh, pointers. And I always like like to share them with people. And I, Alhamdulillah, you know, for me they've been really helpful. Yeah. Um, and. Um, and, and, and it's so weird because every time, uh, you know, I, I tell people about them, people are like, yeah, yeah, they, they're really good. And then I ask, well, did you use any of them? Like, no, I couldn't, hmm. you know, or, or I didn't, or I didn't have the time to, and, yeah. you know, and all they require is a pala, you know, like, like, let's talk, like, I don't know if you, if you don't mind me just kind of, I guess, really going through them. Cool. Yeah. Actually, like one thing that is in my head, mm -hmm. I never actually made like specific goals, which is probably a bad thing. But I always try to judge my one Ramadan against my previous Ramadan. Yeah. And I try to create this like forward progression yeah. between them. But mm -hmm. I don't know if you if you do that as well or I judge myself uh, I, I always go pre Ramadan, after Ramadan. That's how I that's, that's how, how I go. think about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like just I don't care. I don't I don't remember first of all how last Ramadan, last Ramadan to be right. honest with you. I had such a long year. Yeah. But um I always judge like Okay, before Ramadan, how did I feel? Mm -hmm. You know, and after Ramadan, how am I feeling? Right. Right. Alhamdulillah, it's, it's always there's always that improvement, right? And unfortunately, mm -hmm. you know, like, like by the time the next Ramadan comes, it's like the, the, you know it has dropped. So it's like, I feel like yeah. it's the beginning of of things, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, but but still, I don't think the point is to achieve perfection. You know what I mean? Like right. it's just it's just not what it's about. Yeah. So, what are your pointers? Yeah. Okay. So, um, so th there is the first one, and I guess this one is is really simple, but is you know not so much, I guess, which is you have to take responsibility for your own Ramadan. You know, what I mean? like this, I know it's a really simple thing, right? Like like having actual, um, it, it's not the responsibility of the imam to make you cry in salah. You know, mm. It's not the responsibility of the masjid to bring an imam that's going to make your heart melt. It's mm. not the responsibility of the community members um, to have iftars. You know, it's it's mm. none of that, right? Because what people, a lot of people, you know, what they do is they go through this whole month of Ramadan and, and it's just always about blaming. Like, oh, our masjid, they don't have a children program. You know what I mean? And when I go there, I can't focus on what the imam is reciting. You know, mm. the kids are running around. Like, our, you know, our next door neighbors wake me up in the morning time with the lawnmowers. Like, there's all always that kind of sense of like right. complaining uh, and I think it's problematic right it's especially for Ramadan because people always depend on like external things in Ramadan you know yeah. or I couldn't get the time off in Ramadan like and these right. are all like things that I think they're cop-outs like you're just you're just yeah passing on the buck to other people you've got to take responsibility for your own Ramadan like this is your ibadah Allah is not going to ask mm -hmm. your next door neighbor or the imams of the masjid you know or mm -hmm. the management of the masjid like on why you didn't have a good Ramadan you want to have a good Ramadan you have to take responsibility for it so this, this is the first point about it That's so true do you think like as a as an imam I know you've you've done that job before during Ramadan that you kind of fall into this situation where you're not taking responsibility for your own Ramadan because you're so preoccupied yeah. with serving everyone else's yeah. Ramadan. Yeah. I mean, you know, honestly, so this is going to sound really terrible. My spiritual life as an imam, honestly, was not as good as it was uh, when I wasn't. Right. Yeah, like my so. Ramadans as being an imam so now, like third or fourth one that I'm mentoring. Yeah. They're much good. worse. Yeah. I I mean, not time, even just the Ramadan, like, 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 even Salah, yeah. all of these things. There's always a lot of things that are on the back of my mind as a leader of the community that mm -hmm. spiritually I'm just not there. Um, and and yeah. I feel it, you know, so you've got to like spend extra time on the side yeah. for your own spiritual health. <clears throat> and I don't have that time at times, right? Mm -hmm. So I feel like like I'm kind of, I guess, really trading in, you know, like I'm yeah. saying, like what I'm doing for the committee, I'm like, at least what I'm doing is I'm covering, like with these hasanat, I'm covering like some of the siyad, that I, you know, <laughs> like uh, on the other side, I'm trying, yeah. like, it's literally kind of like that kind of idea. Okay, okay, I'm giving away these things, but let me just at least gain them by like serving the people yeah. in my message as they're coming in and answering questions and so forth. But like, uh, spiritually, I don't feel very. Um, so I, I kind of see it like it was the same thing that played out during Hajj, right? 
Because every time I've gone for Hajj before, even if I was a, I went as an organizer, it was like a minor organizer, not yeah. like the main guy in charge. Yeah. And so you'd have all this time for yourself. So you go and you pray every prayer yeah. in the masjid, you spend time, you pray to Hajjud, you do as much to as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. You're like constantly doing all of these things. And then this time I went and I was the main guy in charge and the other guy was supposed to be in charge to show up. So it was just me. Yeah, yeah. And it was like so much work for me to deal with. And like I left Medina and I didn't go to the Rawda because yeah. I just didn't have time. Yeah. And I can't spend two hours waiting to get in or whatever. Like it's just not possible. Yeah. I had so much stuff to do. And like same thing in Mecca. Like I I, based, I did the tawafs I needed to do for my hajj and that was it. I didn't. The other times I would go every single day, I try to do the off, right? So it's kind of like I killed my own, like my own personal experience was so limited. Mm -hmm. My own personal spirituality was so limited because yeah. I gave all of my time and effort for the rest of the group. Yeah. And it's the same thing in Ramadan. It's like you're giving all of your effort. It's, it's so important to have time for yourself in Ramadan. Yeah. You know, I guess really that's the, kind of the second point that I wanted to have. You know, yeah. I mean, it's like you've got to have some time for yourself, right? And, yeah. and, and plan that time for yourself um, in a way where you're just alone, you know, and you know you're not bothering anybody by being alone. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like whether it's your wife, your children, or whatever it is, yeah. right? Um, because that's really kind of how it works. I mean, that's that's the importance mm -hmm. of seclusion. So how like like uh, um, the uh, yeah. you know, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, like he was the prophet, and yet he had the time to go ahead and to take ten times away from everybody else. Mm -hmm. Again, I go back to the whole idea of saying like when we blame other people, it's a cop out, and I feel the same way. I feel yeah. like when I say my community kept me too busy from my own spiritual life, it's a cop out for me. You know, I could have, yeah. I could have said, listen, guys, sorry. Like, you know what I mean? Like you're, you're doing something else, right? But it comes down to the fact it's not just your community. It's also okay. your management of the masjid. It's also um, it's also your paycheck. Like all of yeah. these kinds of things, you know, that, be, that become really like essential. And you have to think about them and your family and your kids and all of these things, right? But you got to like just man up. Like I always, well, no, no man up is not the right word. You got to <laughs> human up. We're in, we're in uh, uh, Trudeau's world. Yeah. You got to human up, I guess. And... Um, and and stick to it, you know what I'm saying? Like it's yeah. important for you. You may never see another Ramadan, so yeah, do it. It's true. I also think back to like when I was younger and like in university and stuff. And like time was such a lo like luxury. Like yeah. it's so much of it. Yeah. And like I would even be like, okay, I'm gonna do like two khatmas in Ramadan. Yeah. And then like the first week, I'd recite like two pages. Yeah. But then like I'd have the time to cram. Yeah. For like four yeah. days straight, and then finish the Quran twice, yeah. right? Um, but now like there's no chance I can yeah. ever get four days to like recite. And so you have to be more like conscious of your time mm -hmm. and be like, okay, well, if I do want to do a khatma or two khatmas, well then I need to put aside this much time every single day. Yeah. You know, even if it's like you know, five minutes here and ten minutes here and twenty minutes here, like just to know exactly where your time is that you could use it. And that's where you like where your planning actually comes in. Like mm -hmm. you know, project management one oh one. You need more spiritual work in Ramadan, but mm -hmm. yet you have the same resources. It's the same twenty-four hours in your day. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so what you go, so what do you, you have to do something about it. And 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 I, I think it also goes back to the whole idea of like taking um, responsibility for yourself. Is that saying like, listen, I know this month is coming. I knew is I have known that it's come. It's going to come mm -hmm. for the past twelve months. So yeah. why didn't you book your vacation any other time? Do you know what I mean? Like, why didn't you book your right. vacation here? Why did you not talk to your boss about the fact that, listen, instead of working eight hours, I, I really need to work six mm -hmm. or five or whatever it is and then make it up somewhere. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. why didn't you save some money so you can go ahead and, and, and actually take some time? Like, these are the things that, do you know, what I mean? like really mm -hmm. important. Like you say, I want to have the best Ramadan ever, but yet you don't think about it until it comes to you. Okay, like, you so. know, like so many people always say like, it's here. And mm -hmm. yeah, bro, it's been coming. Like it's been coming for the past twelve months. You know, like where have you been? Like since the yeah. last Ramadan, it's been coming, right? True. Sure. Uh, so you you've got to be able to like manage your resources properly. You have twenty four hours. You wanna you wanna do more ibadah. You wanna do more recitation of the Quran. You wanna mm -hmm. spend more money. So you've got to save up for these things. You've got to save some time, whether it's in your yeah. vacation time. You've got to save up some money to spend during the month of Ramadan. You got to do all of these kinds of things. And and just like I said, it's project management 101. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it, it, it's not something that really requires you to think about like, what am I going to do? Here's what yeah. you're going to do. You're going to save up on these things so you can go ahead and you spend them accordingly. Yeah. Right. Uh, I, I think you mentioned something that's really awesome, actually, which is, you know, the finishing of the Quran when you had time like twice and three times in Ramadan, right? Mm -hmm. um, I always have uh, these brothers. 
And it's the same group of brothers who say, you know, I'm going to finish the Quran like 10 times, you know, like mm. Uthman ibn Affan used to read yeah. it once in a night, right? Uh, Ahmad ibn Hanbal used to have these things, you know. Yeah. And I said, okay, well, and the first thing I saw, I was like, okay, well, radiallahu anhum jami'an, but <laughs> bra, like Uthman ibn Affan used to do this outside of Ramadan. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so, you know, I always say to people, and, and and people do this outside of Ramadan, but when it comes to worship, they think that it that it's something else, that there's something else that's supernatural about it, right? Mm. Um, you have to set like real goals, like like do you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. smart, attainable goals. Like that's the whole idea. Like yeah. if there's a specific measurable, like, they have to be attainable, you know? You can't just walk into a gym, never been there before and be like, and yeah, saying, I'm just yeah, gonna lift all the weights. Um, <laughs> exactly. But that's what happens every year, right? Yeah. And what ends up happening is that in the weights will fall on your chest. That's exactly what actually happens to you. The yeah. first day you read up on so many, the next day you can't do it. Yeah. Uh, the past couple of years Ramadan started on Saturday. Mm -hmm. So I remember so many people are so excited the first day, like they would read up the whole, you know, and I'm like, guys, don't do that. Don't yeah. do that. You know what I mean? Like, don't don't read a lot more. Like, if you're a person who doesn't read Quran outside of, of outside of Ramadan, mm -hmm. finishing the Quran for you once is not even attainable. Yeah. During the month of Ramadan, so instead, what I always tell people, um, the goal is for you to spiritually better yourself. You want to mm -hmm. exit Ramadan better than you entered it spiritually. Mm -hmm. So instead of setting like, okay, I want to read a juzu a day, I want to read 20 pages a day, I tell people, okay, set aside a certain amount of time that you know you can give away to read. So mm -hmm. you say, okay, I'll give myself 20 minutes a day. I, this is mm -hmm. a person who hasn't read before, yeah. doesn't read during a year. Um, so now 20 minutes every day, right? Even if it's like two pages, it's better. <laughs> Right. Do you know what I mean? Then, then, then crashing like the third day because you're you're just now you want to finish a juzu every single day, and you'll yeah. end up better. Like you'll end, you may not finish the Quran all at once in Ramadan, but yeah. you're going to be a better person. You would have read the book of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala on a regular basis for the past thirty days or twenty nine days, yeah. depending on fiqh council. <laughs> yeah, and it's but that's like more powerful because it's something that could be repeatable after Ramadan. Yeah. Right. And you stick to it. Right? It's not just like cramming all of a sudden, and then like, it's there's no way you could do that consistently for the rest of the year, yeah. right? And and again, when we talk about the Sunnah, the Sunnah of the Prophet is that he used to read the Quran yeah. once in Ramadan. We say, you know, Jibril used to come and read, you know, uh, and he would recite the Quran for him once the year. He passed away, he recited it twice. That's yeah. not a lot. Yeah. That's not a lot. This is the Prophet who I am sure <laughs> yeah. if Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu Allah, used to be able to read the Quran in one night, I'm sure the Prophet was more than capable. I'm sure the Prophet probably did. Like mm -hmm. we, we have stories of the Prophet so reading, you know, uh, Al-Baqarah, Nisa, Al Imran, all in you know, in one raqa. Like we, we know these stories, right? Yeah. So when you say, no, I want to be like the Prophet, well, brah, you, you haven't been practicing like him. You yeah. know what I mean? Like you can't lift the same weight as Ronnie Coleman. <laughs> you, you just can't do that. Yeah. Uh, you got to start somewhere and you might as well start with something that you're capable of doing, which is you say, okay, uh, at five o'clock in the morning, for instance, that's when I have my coffee. Mm -hmm. uh, for those 20 minutes, instead of having my coffee, I'm going to read because it's Ramadan now. So I'm going to read for the 20 minutes yeah. and don't add any more. Like the moment the 20 minutes is gone, close the book and walk away. Yeah. You know, it's so much nicer to say I could have done more and I didn't, yeah. then to like do more and the next day you can't do it. You know how garbage you feel when you couldn't do the same thing you did yesterday? You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It's always better to just walk away with the same amount uh, as all the time. Yeah. And it's a hadith, you know, khayr al qal. Like the best deeds are the ones yeah. that are consistent. Uh, even, if, qal, yeah. even if they're less, right? Yeah. Like it's yeah. what's consistent, yeah. what you can consistently push forward. Yeah. So. And, and that's and that and actually that should be something that's happening on a regular basis, like not just in Ramadan. But yeah. we say this is because in Ramadan a lot of Muslims want to better themselves. So I say that this is the first thing you should do. You know, don't don't go for crazy crazy things in Ramadan. We live in a in a country where a minority, first mm -hmm. of all, where the days are really long in the summertime. Second of yeah. all, where you have to work. You can't take some. I, so I worked for one year in Sudan uh, in Ramadan. I had a fasting in Ramadan, just like my adult time, mm -hmm. and it was awesome, bro, because they changed. <laughs> The hours like they changed the hours i was like what like that doesn't happen anywhere else they're yeah. like okay instead of coming in for eight o'clock in the morning you guys can come in for 10 o'clock yeah. and you can leave at two i'm like that is and, and they change their daylight savings time at that no they don't change anything so they, they don't change daytime yeah yeah 
Um, but it was so cool because even in those four hours that I was supposed to work, like yeah. I would go and sleep in the musalla for an <laughs> hour. You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. just crazy. Like he was, and they were easy going. Like there was no deadlines. I don't even know why people were going. It's just they literally could have just given it to us for free, you know. Oh. But they just decided to to have us. And apparently, this is how the world is like. I also worked in Saudi Arabia when yeah, Ramadan. It's, like it's beautiful. Like nobody works, yeah. you know. Um, and I, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's, there's always a t the way for you to complain and be like, okay, that, during the times of the Prophet, that wasn't the case. Well, it's not the case. You know, mm -hmm. we're not during the times of the Prophet. We're not living in that time. You know, yeah. we live in a time where life is a is a lot more complex. Like, there's a lot mm -hmm. more things to do. Um, we, we didn't have like punching clocks in times of the Prophet. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, people didn't get paid by the minute. Yeah. People didn't get fired for being late for three minutes. It, it just yeah. that's not how it works. You know what I mean? It's so. True. Our lives are completely different. So we have to, I guess, really kind of um, try to adapt ourselves and, and to fast and get the full benefit based on the context that we're in and also the, the challenges that we're facing. Yeah. I think too about like women, especially women who are pregnant or just had kids or breastfeeding, so they might not be able to fast. And sometimes they feel really disconnected mm -hmm. because of that. And it's like, um, you know, the way to kind of, they need to, they need to set aside time for themselves. Yeah. Right. And yeah. find that time where they could recite Quran and yeah. feel a connection to the month because they're like, we're not fasting. And it's like, they don't feel the month because mm -hmm. of that. And they have like all these chores to do and stuff. Yeah. So even then they should be, we should be trying to like their family should be supporting them, but to find some time that yeah. they can dedicate to reciting Quran, yeah. to to praying extra, to making more dua and all of that. And and here actually I can actually mm -hmm. say men should man up, right, about mm -hmm. this honestly, and actually provide for the sisters, uh, their wives, their their daughters and, yeah. and, and I guess really their mothers, right? With with um, more of an opportunity to actually worship. It, mm -hmm. It's easier to be done here than it is back home because back home there's a sen sense of expectation from the women, right? right. Um, here it doesn't exist. Um, no, yeah, you don't. She doesn't need to cook for you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? This I I always say to people that people don't really like it, but she doesn't really need to cook for you. Mm. Um, make life easy for her. You know what I mean? And share that kind of like this is like sharing the reward. You know what I mean? Like yeah. being patient with your wife, being patient with your husband. You're sharing the rewards of like this month, this beautiful month of Ramadan, yeah. and. Uh, you know what your wife is going to be a better person yeah. um when you provide her with the opportunity to be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know yeah. i don't always say to people like treat your wife better just because she's going to be a better person to you but treat mm -hmm. her better because life is going to be good for the both of you because she's going to do the same thing for you you know and yeah. and now our sisters have always done this for the longest time right where uh, i've had so many complaints right where the sisters always say well i don't really get anything out of ramadan like it's just it's so much more work as a matter of fact they hate it like a lot of sisters mm -hmm. hate ramadan because there's so much work that's involved in it you, you know what i mean yeah. like the cooking the and their fasting and they have the children yeah. like so like their daytime like we can take the time off in the traditional household traditional um muslim mm -hmm. household where the man is working and the woman is not yeah. um, men can take the time out they can take a vacation sister can't mm -hmm. like she still has to deal with children with your children with your yeah. children like that like nobody else's you know she still <laughs> has to kind of deal with them yeah. and she has, still has to take care of them and so on. so you've got to be able to um to share that and to know that a part of your worship as well is for you to make it easy for other people to worship. And I say, yeah. I, you know, and, and, and it's a good thing you mentioned the sisters, but I even talk about other people outside of this, like in mm -hmm. the mosques, um, I say to people like, allow other people to worship. So when a, a, a person has to come for tarawih, for instance, if you don't have a babysitter, Mm -hmm. I, 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 I may, may not sound really good <laughs> You know mm -hmm. what I mean to say this But if you don't have a babysitter There's no need for you to come And to distract other people with your children That's a part of sharing the reward as well, right? So mm -hmm. you have to be patient You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But at the same time If you're on the other hand Like if you're on the receiving end You know, you're the one who doesn't have your children And, and a brother yeah. brings his children to the masjid You've got to be the patient one And, and share yeah. the reward Instead of saying like Oh my lord I've been waiting for this month All my life mm -hmm. This whole year And now this brother's bringing His loud son To yeah. ruin my salah I say to you Be patient Like share the reward A little yeah. bit You know what I mean The guy probably is stuck He doesn't have babysitting Or he probably thinks Genuinely that Bringing his son Is, is something that's good For his son You know And he, yeah. and he wants him to To feel that Right mm -hmm. um, So patience on both ends Like being patient With your wives With your husband Be patient with the people around you in the masjid right mm -hmm. all of these things are are really important it's true um, last point uh there's something i wanted to bring up but it yeah. kind of like slipped my head 
So that might be. Go ahead. Yeah. So, so there's one last point, actually. And sure. I think because uh, you're like, you're sleepy right now. Just, <laughs> actually, it's a good thing that he's going to bring us to this here. Um, like, so food, um, food yeah, that's really kind of affects our not just physiological like mm -hmm. being <laughs> you know it actually affects our psychological and spiritual being as well like our mm -hmm. the state that we're in right uh, and i think we're always like conscious of like eating for our physical uh needs right. but we don't eat we're not educated enough uh to eat for our um i guess really for spiritual needs right right so i you know it's 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 difficult for me to to see a, a brother, for instance, right, wanting mm -hmm. to come to eat to Taraweeh, for instance, and pray, right? And then I see him before Taraweeh, for instance, eating in the Iftar Jama'i, for instance, with everybody else. Mm -hmm. But the man has got a heap amount of rice, like like literally mm -hmm. like a mountain of rice he's eating it, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, this All this meat, zero like greens, vegetables, anything <laughs> like that, you know what I mean? And I, I know the man knows, like I know the man knows. I was like, brother, what you're eating right now is this, does not give you energy, yeah, right? It's very... Uh, it's very like, what, what what do you call this? Like, um, the food that you have is just not, not nutritionally proper. Like, it's, it's just right. it's just not it's not gonna help you, and it's making you gonna make you fall asleep. Like, it mm -hmm. also goes back to the whole idea of like taking uh, responsibility for yourself for your month itself it includes you knowing what to eat so you can worship Allah as we get better. You it's know, true. so um, it's a really radical idea mm -hmm. that I um, I had a couple of times ago. Um, so a couple of years, like five years ago, me and my wife went through this crazy like idea, like, uh, six years ago. Um, and all we did was we had juice. So we, like we would just juice during the month of Ramadan. So we would what? break our, yeah. So we would break our, uh, like uh, that's our fasting. That's a very crazy idea. Was, yeah. <laughs> so at that time I was reading this book for, uh, uh, Sheikh Al-Albani. I don't know if you, you know that there's a, there's an author. It's okay. weak, uh, Athar, that, that uh, if you fast, you can fast for 40 days, not eat for 40 days, and you can just only drink water. And it was oh. like, and Sheikh Albani said that it was uh, like, like he basically felt so much better. Like he didn't go through the whole 40 days, but yeah. he felt so much better about it. So I was like talking to my wife. I was like, you know what we could do? We can actually just do like this juicing. It was like this era of juicing that was happening. I had a friend of mine who used to work for a marketing company. And he, and he, it was so funny because he came together all at once and he said to me, um, I have this juicer. I want you to test it and tell me how you feel about it. You know, it's just that yeah. easy of a thing. And so the first couple of days, I felt like garbage. Wallahi alim. You know, like I would be so hungry. I would be like, uh, and I was leading Salah in, in Niagara Falls Mosque. And I just felt so hungry like the first couple of days. After, after you know, this breaking my iftar with it, I'm like, I want to eat something. Like, this doesn't yeah. make any sense. And then day three, day four, day five, Wallahi Ibrahim, I'm telling you right now, I probably could have carried the whole congregation on my back, like ran with them. You know, I just, I was like so alert. I was so up, you know wow. what I mean? I was like, I wanted to like prolong the salah. I wasn't like yawning. You know what I mean? I was like, I was so up and about and it was just juice. The, the whole month, all I had was just juice. So I'd have like a juice at iftar time. Uh, I would go pray taraweeh, like halfway through the taraweeh, I would just have another juice. Yeah. And then for suhoor, I would have another juice. And that's it. Wow. And I, I, I would suggest for anyone to try it at least once in their lifetime, right? But now, uh, me and my family, we actually, from that time, we just went to this whole idea of like oversimplifying uh, iftar for ourselves. That's amazing. And that, that kind of goes into the previous point we were talking about, like about... Like the brother is expecting all this stuff yeah. from his wife and they're expecting yeah. their wife to cook this stuff. And they're expecting these like elaborate meals yeah. and it's draining all their time and it's draining their effort. And, and it does no good. And it does no and good to the them idea. in the end. And then he, goes no to, good. he goes to pray and he's not even praying. Yeah, he's like, not in a salah. He's yeah. yawning. He's burping biryani. He's yeah. like breath in everybody's face, right? Yeah. Um, so like, so it's, it's so... It's so weird to me how we we're so educated about like so many things, but yet we just don't know how to get. And these are simple things to do that yeah. you can get the the full benefit of Ramadan. You know what I mean? And it's it's sad. You know, I I read on the internet this like these non-Muslims, mm -hmm. like one of them was like, "It's amazing these Muslims are like yeah. not eating for this long," and then the other one's like, "Who cares? They just stuff their face afterwards." They do. And he's right. And it's like the month is supposed to be like there's this contradiction in our the way we live, because yeah. the month is supposed to be a month about like moderation yeah. and bringing like actually having less yeah. like doing with less you know yeah. um 
But people gain weight. Not people long. gain weight. People gain weight. Yeah. I can't believe that. Like I always say, like, these days are say, so oh, long. Oh man, I gained two pounds this Ramadan. I was like, what do you say? Like Ramadan <laughs> yeah. is thirty days. How like how can you gain weight if your your period of eating is less than eight hours? Yeah. During the daytime, you know, and they're like, no, well, I eat gataif, I eat this, I eat yeah. this. He's just stuffing himself because he's he, he thinks he's compensating, but, yeah. but he's eating like a bodybuilder. He's, eating more. he's a bodybuilder. <laughs> like he, and he's, well, he's building his body. He's just building the, the wrong shape. But yeah. do you know what I'm saying? He's just, but it's he's like just, this feeling of like greed almost because yeah. it's like you've been prevented and now you're allowed. Yeah. And it's like, I must consume everything. It's so bad. It is so <laughs> bad for your health. It's so yeah. bad for your, like your psychological, like, like being, like you feel kind of depressed as well. Do you know what I yeah. mean? Like I, I remember how happy I used to be when, um, uh, when, when I, I just went through this, like, like this fasting time with just only mm -hmm. the juices. Right. So now uh, it's a little extreme. It's not really extreme, mm. but I can. I'm gonna give anybody, anyways, what I eat now. So, so hold on. So this is a good thing that you're here, actually, because for the past couple of years, people have been blaming me. People are like, okay, how come you don't invite people over, and how come you don't go to people when they <laughs> invite you? Because I'm really strict on what I eat during Ramadan. Eh? Like, I'm, and mm. and I invited one brother one time over to my house for iftar, and I don't think I think he wasn't really happy because we break our iftar with uh, dates and. Uh, a a, um, a drink of BCAA, so like branch chain amino acids. Oh, so right. it's like the best thing, right? Mm. Uh, with like electrolytes. And I have this like special stuff that I buy, you know, right. you get it from Popeyes. It's really good. You can get it in all kinds of different flavors. Mm. So I have that shake as soon as they start is done with like a couple of dates. And then I go and pray Maghrib. And then I mm. come back and then I have like uh, a salad with like uh, eggs, so like two boiled eggs, mm -hmm. not like actually fried, like boiled eggs. Right. And the salad itself is really important for me to have like like crazy colors in it. Like it's got to be as colorful as possible because that's what you want. You want like yeah. nutrient dense like foods, right. stuff that's ha it's actually good for you. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Because your body is like, like deprived of all of these things. Like yeah. yeah. So you want all kinds of greens. You want all kinds of like uh, sprouts as well. I have a lot of uh, right. alfalfa sprouts. I have a lot of like so all these kinds of things, right? And then. I'll I'll go to Taraweeh, mm -hmm. um, and you're full. Like you're full. Like these kinds of foods. Like the first couple of days they're, they're a little annoying, but then you you become full, right? right. Like you, after a couple of days, you just your body gets used to it. Mm -hmm. I guess that's what this guy is gonna feed me for. The, like that's basically what your body's saying. Yeah. Say, okay, I guess that's what he's gonna feed me for the next couple of days. So I'm fine with it, yeah. and you'll learn it. And then when I come back from Taraweeh, uh, we just have like a like a coffee, like a decaf coffee or whatever it is. You just hang mm -hmm. out with my wife, and then we go to bed. Suhoor time, we just have like um. Uh, what's I'm gonna call it? Um, like two Dates. spoons of so oh, two wow. raw spoons of um, uh, oatmeal, and mm -hmm. mixed with like a, a casein, like a protein shake. But casein is like this like long mm. absorb absorption kind of like protein, so it, it takes a long time because like, yeah, and that's it. Yeah, uh, you know what I mean, and, and like, and I think about it. I'm like, that's about like twelve hundred to like fifteen hundred calories if you think about it, right? Wow. But again, I'm not a bodybuilder. I don't really do anything hard. You know what I mean? I just I like my work. I'm sitting around. I'm talking. Like most of my work, I'm just talking. I'm a, I'm a speaker, but mm -hmm. that's what I do for a living. You know, so I don't need to like have any more of that. And if I go to the gym or whatever, I'll have a protein shake. And usually, I always mm -hmm. go to the to, to the gym uh, after Tarawi. Yeah, yeah, after mm -hmm. I have to go. I'm sure. diabetic, so I I really need to kind of move mm -hmm. uh, in order for me to kind of like live the way that I want to, yeah. right? And and that's it, and it's so easy because the longest thing that takes here for us to make is boiling the eggs. Hmm. It's the longest thing that it takes, and we just you know, and it doesn't matter who does it. Sometimes I even let my nine year old daughter do it. I'm like, Maryam, put the eggs hmm. in the you know, and I just she just puts them and we just walk away. She knows as soon as they boil, mm -hmm. she you know covers it, closes it, and leaves it. I, we don't overcook stuff. Mm -hmm. We undercook food, actually, in Ramadan, right? Because you don't want to mm -hmm. overcook anything. And then just the salads, you just toss it. It's always fresh. So I'm always coming back from the mosque. I'll just drive by. I'll get some sort of salad, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Spinach, all kinds of things. Uh, and, and that's it. And some feta cheese when I'm feeling really naughty and, you know, I want to overdo it, right? <laughs> and that's it, man. Like, it's, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, Oatmeal is just in the microwave, 30 seconds. A minute if you want it to be really soft right. sometimes i don't even put it in a micro sometimes i just like cover it uh i just put in some water and just put it in the fridge mm -hmm. you know what i mean um so and that's it like that's what i'm saying to you is my wife is never ever concerned with oh my god what are we gonna cook today mm -hmm. you know and one day uh you know so these people are really they really insist on inviting me over 
uh, <laughs> two places. Other people, I guess, uh, I just ignore. Yeah. But this guy was like, like he invited me over, and I was like, you know what? Fine, I'll go. But I told him, like, listen, I don't really eat that much, so please don't make <laughs> anything, you know. And I went, and the f- I, I'm telling you, I just saw the food, and they almost passed out. Like I was just like, <laughs> like this is crazy. Like the the sugar level is a thousand percent right now over what it should be, you know. Wow. So. Um, these are the kinds of things that I'm just talking about in order for you to kind of have, I guess, really successful like yeah. Ramadan. Yeah, it's so important. I think like it's, you know, I feel a bit of hypocrisy right now because I've been getting so much weight recently. Mm-hmm. So I kind of like, but you know, I'm, I'm actually yeah. looking forward to Ramadan because it's it's the best time for me to start like hardcore implementing yeah. a diet. Yeah. Right. Because the amount of times you're eating are so limited. Yeah. That it's easy to be strict with yourself and say, okay, this I'm not going to eat anything unhealthy yeah. this time, and after that you're fasting, so you can't eat anything. I right? actually so started like doing intermittent fast after you told me about it, eh? Yeah. And I'm I'm like it loving works. I'm loving the yeah. mental clarity. Like yeah. I'm not losing any weight, which is really weird. Mm-hmm. Um, but like the mental clarity, like I'm so clear on mm-hmm. things and all my tasks. I'm all on point with them. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Before I used to like I would take like a million break during the daytime. Okay, I'm gonna go have a meal here. I'm gonna have yeah. a meal here. I'm gonna have a meal here. And after a meal, maybe I should sleep a little bit. You know, mm-hmm. like that's the problem with like when you're when you're self-employed, right? Yeah. Like, there's no really hours. You can just work on things whenever you want. But yeah. now that I have like this time, yeah. um, it, 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 it's amazing. Yeah. It is really amazing, man. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is a this is an opportunity for people to kind of take that take these teachings into practice. I mean, mm-hmm. the prophet I said, let me saw a man who's like really obese once. Yeah. So he said to him, uh, yeah. uh, if you if this situation was different, it would be better for yeah. you. Which is really beautiful because on the one hand, the prophet's not like body shaming him yeah. and being like, you're disgusting, you're that. Yeah, he just yeah. said, if this situation was different, it would be better for you. Which is the reality, right? Like if we find a way to have more moderation the way that we eat, have more moderation in, in, in the way that we approach food in general, um, you actually feel like a better person, your ibadah will be deeper, yeah. your sense of focus will be there. Yeah. You know, people complain about their khushua all the time and their prayers. How am I supposed to focus on my prayer? Well, when you're filling your body. You're, eat- you're eating too much. Yeah. We're eating too much. Like, so you look at like the, uh, you, you just, you know, walk into any mosque today yeah. and just look at the line of the men. Look at the first line. That's like the, the best <laughs> line, right? That's the best line. Yeah. Just look at the bellies in the first line. You know what I mean? Yeah. And immediately you start to realize there's no way these brothers here are all about khushua right now. This is, it's yeah. not how it works, you know. Um, it's a good thing you, you mentioned this story of the, the man who's obese. But the, actually the companions, there's a very famous story of a companion uh, and uh, and his son was overweight. And mm-hmm. when they were telling him that he's dying, he's he declined to prey on him because like he, mm-hmm. he assumed that this man has killed himself he thought that he was like okay this guy's mm. committing suicide by overeating right wow. i mean we don't want to oversimplify it because obviously yeah. obesity is not like that but this is how some of these companions they saw it right they saw it as like a person who overeats and gets too full to the, so he's killing himself basically yeah. um, you know what i mean and, and losing his really his self-worth right yeah it reminds me of uh you know Umar al-Khattab when he saw i think it was one of the sahaba he saw him like Carrying some meat, mm-hmm. so he told his son. Him, was eat, it his son? Was that yeah. Yeah. So his son is it? So so he eats it. So um, so uh, so he asked somebody, "Don't call a qarim to her." And this is uh, yeah. the reason why I know this story, by the way, because I uh, in Sudanese there is a word called kharimt, a shay. Yani, um, yani, I, I am feening for something, mm-hmm. right? And it actually, I think it actually came from that word, the Arabic yeah. word of, of qarim to her. And he said to him, Qala, if if you you know you wish anything, you just go and buy it. Yeah. Like like to him, that was a big deal. Like you just whatever you wish, you go and buy. <laughs> yeah. And I'm looking at like the overindulgence like that we're going through. That, like, that, anything like he considered you want. he considered that to be over materialistic. Yeah. Like, oh, you just want meat, so you go buy it. Like every time you want something, you go go <laughs> get so it for crazy. yourself. Crazy. Like, <laughs> and it's like this whole society is built on that concept. That's basically like, yeah. When you want something, go get it. Go get it right away. Yeah, go get it. And then that's the way that we we deal with like everything and we we're just constantly wanting to consume and like this idea of ramadan and you're preventing yourself from from consuming and people are just using it as like okay i'm not allowed to consume until this time at which point i'm going to consume as much as possible yeah. even more than i would normally yeah. consume yeah. and it's you miss the point the yeah. point is to rein in your consumption to not be so materialistic to not have the that to realize that you don't have 
you shouldn't have this like overwhelming dependency on food Mm -hmm. right like food should be something that's limited in your life that's something that's that's meant to serve you not for you to serve it kind of thing right and it's it's even it's even more than that it's it's just like you know when back in the day the shiuk used to say ramadan is a school right Mm -hmm. like because it it teaches you so much about yourself right like Mm -hmm. i always say like brothers you start to find out more about yourself Mm -hmm. when you just know now you were you were able to stop yourself from eating Mm-hmm. Brothers who smoke, for instance, you ask them, why do you smoke? Yeah. Brother, you know, the, you know, it's not good for you, whatever. They say, oh, you know, make, make dua for me. You know, I, there's nothing I can mm-hmm. do about it. I'm really sorry. You know what I mean? I just can't quit. And yet in Ramadan, the person stops. Mm-hmm. I was like, you, you see what it's teaching you? Like you're capable, you're capable beyond your own knowledge. Like you don't even know how capable you are of doing things. Yeah. You know, and Ramadan comes all of a sudden and it just gives you this like, like lesson about yourself. Like, mm-hmm. look. You can do it, you know what I mean? So you can do anything and, and food shouldn't be something that should like um, limit the way you think or you know what I mean? Yeah. Or stop you from like reaching dreams and uh, all kinds of things or working hard, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? All these, because it's just such, it's so insignificant in our lives and yet um, yet it's such a big deal for us nowadays, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it's... You're right. It's like it it tests it tests your willpower. It mm-hmm. tests your discipline. Yeah. It tests all of these things. It's a month of sabr because like it's your endurance and your discipline, what you're mm-hmm. capable of, what you're not. And uh, and you, and you certainly come back a better person than you know. I, yeah. I always say like even if you didn't read as much Quran or mm-hmm. give as much sadaqa or even as like even if you didn't fast as as well as you think, you always come out of Ramadan a better person than you are before you started it you know this, this yeah. to me is like that uh, and it's also because everybody around you is like so you know what i mean like yeah gives you that kind of a feeling right well i mean like like you said it's not about the amount of ibadah that you do it's about the amount of ibadah that stays with you afterwards yeah, yeah. right yeah um was it uh abdullah bin umar as well who yeah. um who was asked like how do you know the hajj is accepted and he yeah. said that the person who goes yeah. back a better person than they came right yeah. so you go through this whole journey of hajj and you yeah. do all of these uh ri- rites and rituals and you exert yourself physically so much but like the winner is the person who came back and they actually became better than mm-hmm. than when they left exactly um, and and that's that's how it is also for ramadan it's for exactly. anything right like it's not just ramadan like even even salah for instance right like yeah. you, you know what i mean salah is so small because we do it five times a day so we don't really notice it but it yeah. should actually it should actually it, improve your behavior you know what i mean it's yeah. very small increments but you should always do that like every mm-hmm. single time you pray you should be a little bit better than you did than you were before you started the salah because it has to remind you yeah. of so many things that you're you know uh, uh that, that that you know that allah so has, has ordered mm-hmm. you to do right and and it's not just like eating and drinking because mm-hmm. ramadan is not just about that you know and yeah. i i really think it's problematic when we always say like it's just ramadan is just about eating and drinking right mm-hmm. um but the reminder that you're not eating and not drinking, not because uh, of any other reason except for to worship Allah. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying to you? So yeah. like, I remember this very famous uh, definition of what taqwa is. قَالَ أَنْ يُذْكَرَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى قَالَ أَنْ يُطَعَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى فَلَا يُعْصَى وَأَنْ يُذْكَرَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ فَلَا يُنْسَى وَأَنْ يُشْكَرْ فَلَا يُكْفَرْ Right? Like this, mm. these are the three things that are like really amazing about the taqwa, right? And, and mm. this is what you, this is the fruit of where you come out of it. Mm. I guess really we can end it with this here because I really got to go, man. <laughs> um, my wife is calling me on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> so, in trouble. Um, yeah. Um, so, so what's the, what's the first one? Is that we said, أَنْ يُطَعَ اللَّهُ تَعَلَى فَلَا يُعْصَى So oh. really, the 29th day of Sha'ban, there's really nothing happening. You know, you're still eating and drinking and doing whatever it is, right? And then the first day of Ramadan, all of a sudden, food becomes haram for you. Yeah. You, you see what's happening? It doesn't become haram because there's anything in it that's different. Like, it doesn't become mm-hmm. harmful all of a sudden. Like right. Food is still the same way, right? Yeah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all of a sudden has made it haram for you at a certain time. Mm-hmm. Well, here it comes down to an yuta' فَلَا So yeah. it's obedience and never disobedience, not for any other reason besides obedience and mm-hmm. and staying away from disobedience. That's that's really as simple as it is, right? Allahu Ta'ala Fala And this is also like I think it's a, a perfectly exemplified when it comes to uh, Ramadan, where 
Um, I've used this story so many different times, but like the first year my daughter uh, fasted Ramadan, she hates dates. She doesn't like dates at all. She, <laughs> she's like, they just bother her. I don't know what it is, right? Uh, and I told her, Mariam, when you come back from school, you can't eat until like, until everybody's making it. I was like, what, Baba? Like, that's crazy. Like, you know, yeah. like, like I come back from school at three o'clock. If I was like nine, I was like, yeah. well, people fast for a lot longer, Mariam, you know? And, yeah. and when I was your age, I was fasting in Sudan or whatever, all these things, right? Yeah. And I remember this, the first day, um, as soon as we, <laughs> the Adan came about, right? I gave her the, the you know, the like the piece of date, right? And she just held it, man. She was like, <laughs> she was so thankful for that piece. Like, it's such a, like a small thing, right? But what you take for granted for mm. so long, all of a sudden becomes something that you're like, oh, I'm thankful for this. Like, I'm thankful now. Mm. Do you know what I mean? That I can have the food that was meaningless to me before. Like, mm. you, like who thinks about food as something important? Nobody goes through hunger in the country we are living in, alhamdulillah, you yeah. know, like it, it's, I'm never worried about my next meal, bro. Like mm -hmm. I'm never, I don't know of anybody else who is worried about mm -hmm. where am I going to have my next meal, you know? Yeah. Uh, and then all of a sudden Ramadan, you become thankful for that. Like, because you were taking it for granted, you know, this water yeah. that, you know, living in the country with the highest amount of water, Canada, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. All of a sudden, like that glass of water, you're like, oh, thank God, alhamdulillah, it's time for, you know, like, all of a sudden you think and and the last one is like and yuthkar allah ta'ala fala fala and yuthkar allah ta'ala fala yunsa and and this is like that you remember allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you don't forget him right and this is regularly that reminder of the fact that you can do things and then taqwa it becomes like a really nice thing right that's why mm -hmm. the prophet says you know um uh, if a person comes to you qala wa in qatalu ahad aw shatamu ahad right he fights you or mm -hmm. says anything to you fal yaqul inni imru'un sa'im I am fasting, this, and this mm. reminder is not for any for the people to say like, you know, you, you've lived in Egypt, right? Where, yeah. You, you know, oh, where, like, yeah. and a little bit where you know you you just you just driving by somebody in Ramadan, like you just driving by him, and you know, all of a sudden he raises his like, Allahumma inni sa'im, you know, like 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 bro, I don't need to know, like it's you, you know, you're fasting, it's not me, but then he has he has that need to remind everybody that he's fasting, but that reminder is really for you, right? Like yeah. so, you actually remember the fact that okay, because I'm fasting, I have to adhere to a certain type of code in the way that I behave and in the way that I speak yeah. to people, right? And in a way that I respond to people, even when they do me wrong, like not just not just when, you know, when I'm on the right, mm -hmm. even when they do me wrong, there's a certain way that I have to behave and a certain way that I have to react to people, yeah. right? And that's like really remembering a lot because at times, <laughs> you, you, you yeah. know what I mean? You, you forget that, especially if your belly is full. Uh, and you know again the last thing i actually want to mention which is how you bring taqwa right like um fasting like is such a beautiful and unique like ibadah in itself right mm -hmm. um I, I think uh, Abraham Mas Maslow's is a uh, hierarchy of needs, right? Where he always puts the physiological needs. Yeah. When those are met some, to a certain amount, mm -hmm. right, then you move on to the next, right. which is security. And when those are met, you move on to the next one. Yeah. When those are met, then you move on to the next one, right? But then when you're lacking the most basic ones, your Nothing mind can't go to the other yeah. ones. You see what I'm saying? So like, yeah. so that's why fasting is such a beautiful. That's why when the Prophet says, when someone says, you know, "Ya ma'ashar al-shabab man istatam minkum al-ba'at fa liyatazawaj," right? For if he does not fulfill, then he is in the sin. For he is in the sin. For he is in the sin. Right? Or like, mm -hmm. or like, it's like it's like a protection for you. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Why is this? Because you're never ever going to think of like, if you're fasting, you don't think of like, um, like committing zina. Your so. your belly's on your belly's like grumbling. You're on something yeah. else. You know, you know, yeah. like you're not gonna think of like, okay, how am I gonna take over the world? Yeah. You know, when I'm fasting, you don't think these thoughts. You don't yeah. think of all. It, it, you're humbled by the fact that such basic needs of your body are literally like just kind of shutting you down mm -hmm. and shutting your 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 process of thinking. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, Ramadan is is a, is a really beautiful time for us to kind of have these like um, reflections. Yeah. I was thinking about it like in terms of that. Fasting is the one thing people can't see. Yeah. Scholars talk about that. Uh, like some uh, wali on edge CP that God says, yeah. fasting is for me because no one could see you doing it. And yeah. you could profess to everyone, you could scream, I'm fasting, but nobody knows if you actually are because yeah. they don't, they weren't watching you all day. But, yeah. um, and this goes back to taqwa in terms of that when Ali ibn Abi Talib talked about taqwa. Yeah. He said, yeah. Yeah. That it's basically 
you know, he said, acting according to the revelation and fear of the most magnificent and preparing yourself for the day that yeah. you meet him, yeah. the day that you leave and you meet mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all of taqwa is like preparing yourself for the day you're going to meet Allah. The only reason you would fast and stick with it is because you know Allah can see you yeah. and you know one day you're going to stand in front yeah. of him. Yeah, and we had the very famous hadith on the Prophet where he says, you know, the taqwa ha huna, taqwa yeah. ha huna. And he's, he's tapping his chest out of the side. Like saying to the, like saying to you, really, like your beard is, your beard is yeah. not your taqwa. You know what I mean? Like the way you lower your gaze in front of people, that's not your taqwa. That's just not yeah. what it is. You know what I mean? The taqwa is something that's inside of your heart. Yeah. It, it, it's really how principled you are of a person yeah. when you're all alone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's, yeah. a, that's a difficult thing to do. And and food and drinks is like the simplest way of doing it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like lowering your gaze when no one can see you. That's hard, bro. That's not easy. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, uh, not eating and drinking when no one can see you. That's mm. also like, it's not, it's not easy, right? Like yeah. salah and all of these things. You can sometimes, sometimes, yeah. honestly, you pray really well when other people are watching you. But like, and, you and the shaitan plays in your head, especially yeah. us as the imams. Um, I don't know about you. Uh, I don't know an imam anymore, so I guess especially <laughs> you guys as imams, <laughs> right? When when it comes to your head, like okay, I'm gonna pray a certain way because I really want to teach people as well, right? Right. Um, I remember when I was younger, I um, first time I watched Sheikh Ali Halabi. Yeah. I don't know if you know Sheikh Ali Halabi. Yeah. I was really young the first time I saw him, and I saw him in a mosque, and like to me, he was like the closest thing to like like the biggest scholar I've ever seen at that time, right? Mm. So I kept watching him pray, right? And when he finished, I'm like, this guy's praying normal, like everybody else. Like, what's, what's so special about this guy? As I thought, like, there's a, there's a certain way he's going to do right. anything about it. You know what I mean? Right. But then I realized, like, if he prays any other way mm. than anybody else, then clearly he's not going to be doing it. You know, he's going to be doing it for the people, right? Like, right. even when you better your salah for people or make it even worse for the people, you know, like, shaitan mm -hmm. kind of plays with your minds so much, right? But uh, fasting is such an individual thing. Mm -hmm. You can't exemplify to you. Can't, people can't see and be like, okay, fast like this guy. You yeah. can't do it. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. even the monastic of the Hajj, the Prophet said, ani manasikum, like watch how I do it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's it. And 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 fasting is like all is all dependent on your personal judgment of things. Like even like the beginning times of fasting. Mm -hmm. Right, like this is such a soft start. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I say this, and you may not agree, but like, you know how nowadays we go by fasting is like by the minute, right. by the second, yeah. like five forty-five and thirty seconds. <laughs> like, no, bro. Like, it, the, yeah. we've never had that in a, in our history of like fil. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Where it's been that that hard of a start in the beginning time, yeah. right? And because it's soft. In the way you begin and you, you know what I mean? Well, ending it, it's also soft. It's always depending on somebody else's like observation of something, yeah. right? You, it, it's, it's such an individual and such a like a beautiful thing that, mm. that you can only feel like how fearful you are of Allah, how conscious mm. you are of Allah. Yeah, it's so true. It's phenomenal. So you got to run because your wife yeah. is... Yes, uh, so we're good so because she's been calling and she's, she wants homo <laughs> milk. What else do you want here? I have a grocery Two list Two different too. types of schools, and snacks, Spe fruits if you can. Speaking of food. And yogurt snacks. Both of us got to do grocery runs right now. Huh? So. so speaking of food and both of us have to do grocery yeah, runs. Yeah, yeah, I know. Anyways, thank you for holding me, man, and no, keeping me here. Uh, it's thank you for coming. Absolute pleasure to be with you, man.